Well, last week I got the left side of this sheep wagon body disassembled, and then through the last few days I took the right side and I took it apart as well. And it also has a lot of rot in it. To remove this chewed out portion here where the tire was rubbing up against it, I would have to take off about four inches, maybe three and a half to clean that up. And it has the same scenario underneath this top added on portion that there's a whole line of rotted material here as well that would have to be cut out. To get some of that I'd have to come down another two and a half to three inches to remove that. So the bottom line is I could end up with maybe 10, 10 and a half, maybe 11 inches if I really stretched on it. So to get my 20 inch sideboard, you know, I have maybe half of that that I could use on this. On these side irons, there's a little variation between them all. The front one's distinctly different. The back one is different. The two on the center are pretty uniform but I'm putting tags on them so I can remember just where they go. My goal is not to sandblast these, so I would like them to go back somewhat in the same position. So this will help me remember where they go. This is the left side, front, first one back, second one back, and then the rear. So they should go back same place where they came off. And some of these other irons, like this brake hanger, I'll mark these also. Now well, this came off the left side of this body. This marker is about shot. I'm going to trade markers out here. So this is a door latch. This will be the right front. And so on down the side. So then I don't have to be quite so careful about where I store these. I need to get these off my table saw, which becomes my bench. So I need to use my table saw. So now I can set these aside and even though they'll be all mixed up, I'll be able to sort them out when I'm ready. There's only one of these irons. This hung the side box off of the left side. And these two irons hung the box off of the right side. And you know, I think I would remember it. But after enough time passes, I know from experience, I scratch my head and say, where did these come from? So I'll put these are the right side box. Time has a way of erasing the memory. There we go. So some old material out there says every bolt and nut should be marked where it goes exactly at the same place. I'm not quite so much to that point. They were randomly picked out of the bolt bin to begin with. As I don't have enough here that's going to sufficiently replace every position because a lot of these were rusted and broken. So I'll save what I can. This one was the right rear support brace. I think I can get that nut off and re-weld that back on. So I'll save that. But these other broken pieces, no sense in saving them. I'll save what I can and reuse what I can where I can. All these, pretty much scrap iron.
Well, you remember a couple years ago, I rebuilt this chuck wagon from the Spiro Ranch. And there was a Jim Zuccaro, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, brought up some old fur flooring that he had taken out of a home that he was remodeling down there in California. So anyway, he brought enough up for two floors, so I've been saving this second portion specifically for this job because I knew it would need a new floor. Now this needs to be a 42 inch. The other one was 38 inch, so 12 pieces was enough that I could trim for that 38. But 12 pieces here isn't quite wide enough for my 42 inch floor, so I'm gonna to have to add the 13th piece. Now the flooring used in these early homes here in America were very common, this dug fur, tongue and groove, three and a quarter, three and a half inch, and it has this pretty close to vertical grain. Some of it, when it comes to closer to a 45 degrees, is more of a rift sawn, but it's not a lateral sawn board. This one here is pretty close, you can see as well. I would like to duplicate these in the same style, including the tongue and the groove here, we are three and a half inches. Well, I went and bought a four by four, which is also three and a half inches. And if I turn this correct position and saw off my 13th piece like so, I'm gonna end up with that same vertical-ish style grain. If I were to saw it off down here, it would be true vertical. Here it's more of a rift sawn, but this has a little drying crack. Uh, we'll see how I go. Maybe I can take it off of here. We need to be right at that three quarters of an inch when we're finished. So I can probably take it off right here and get a true vertical grain. You can see where this old growth fur is very tight grain. This is a newer, it grew a little faster. The growth rings are a little wider but it will be sufficient for our 13th piece to make our full 42 inches. So sometimes the question is asked, well, why was it vertical grain or this style of material? Well, it is far less apt to split and, and leave splinters when it is a vertical grain than when it is a horizontal grain like so. This is far more apt to chip off and splinter and in the case of a home, when you're walking on this, splinters in the bare little tootsies are not very favorable. But on wagons, this oftentimes was being shoveled across because they were shoveling out grain. So my speculation is the reasoning is the same. It is less apt to splinter and catch the edge of a scoop shovel, scooping grain just as much it is less apt to splinter and end up in your toe. I did end up taking it off the top. This bottom is a little more vertical, but when I turned it over, there were some knots that I didn't like the look of, so I used the other side instead. These old original floorboards are 12 foot 6 inches. My new one is exactly 12 feet and this floor needs to be 12 feet. So I'll kind of stagger me a little bit here and then I'll be able to clamp these together, figure out what my width is and I can trim off of this side. 
Plus I may have to trim off the tongue off of this piece here as well. So each of these from this joint to this edge here is three and a quarter. But to get my 42 inches, it figures out mathematically I need 12.9. So I'm gonna put a clamp on these, clamp them together, see what I actually have. Uh, maybe I'll trim this off first here and then I can trim off that outer edge to my exact 42. So since this is old flooring, I may have to take this back open and clean up some of my tongues. These aren't wanting to close up real well. These first four are pretty good, but then I got some open spots here and these two. Yeah, from all the years being in the houses, there's been some dirt here that accumulated and all this dirt coming out of the corner there. Well, I kind of jumped the gun. I need to go back and make sure these are all clean first. Mainly on the top side. Makes sense. I have 42 and 1 8 so I just need to take an eighth of an inch off of this edge. Well what I just about did was mess up my brand new floorboard. I measured across and from this joint out I needed three inches. So I set my fence to the inside of my blade at three inches and as soon as I laid that up there I realized I had forgotten this tongue here. So I need to factor in another quarter of an inch. So instead of three, I need to be three and a quarter to allow for that tongue. I just about messed it up. Careless little errors like that, that can cost you. It happens to all of us. Now at 42. You know, there's two main sizes in wagon undercarriages, and they're measured between the upright standards on the bolsters. 38, which is what we made the chuck wagon at, is most popular for grain wagons, and then 42s, what this will be, which is almost necessary to have a sheep wagon on in order to give you enough width to put a bed in the back. So the search today is for 42 inch wagon gears, primarily for those who are seeking to build a sheep wagon. You just can't do it on a 38. So even as I said, you can't do it on a 38, you could, you know, you could put wider benches on it. The space where you walk between the stove becomes four inches narrower and it's noticeable when you're dealing with sheep wagons. But a lot of times today, in order to fit a queen size bed in, a standard 78 inch wide box is too narrow. So oftentimes I get requests to build bows for 84 inches, enough to put a queen size bed in. In order to do that, you have to make your benches wider, even if you're starting out on a 42 inch gear. So it is possible to get some width on the benches when you're limited to within the bolster width.
Well, if I understand the story correctly, this wagon was built here locally, 26 miles from here in Red Lodge, in either 1890 or very early 1890s. So this has got about 120, 30 years on it. So it's really nice to have this old flooring that came out of a home. And as I remember right, this came out of the Lake Tahoe area that was probably built prior to that. So we have flooring here to go into this old sheep wagon that might even predate this sheep wagon itself. I don't know these things for sure. But it's nice to have old material, even though it's been resurfaced, to put underneath the sheep wagon so it fits the vintage of it. The flooring on this wagon was totally shot, and you can see the cross members here are also really rotted, broken, one is missing. So we're going to redo all that again, and we'll get into that next week. I did have a chance to visit with the owner on this. We've got some direction on that, and I'll reveal some of that stuff again probably next week of where we're probably going to go with the sheep wagon in its rebuilding process. So anyway, we're started on the floor. We're going to start putting the sheep wagon together. Appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.